there was this whole <laughs> yeah really this is the gabagool right here you know what I'm saying? This is, <laughs> but uh you know i think there was this whole idea that oh we need to push everything darker stronger harder you know and it's like that's not making it better exactly okay. it's like balance yeah can you just simply make a coffee that tastes the way coffee smells Thanks for tuning in to episode 20 of the Sultan of Slow Drip. I'm your host, the Sultan of Slow Drip, joined as always by Victor Chan here. Hey guys, what's up? So um, today's actually a pretty interesting day. Um, I got a lot of surprises for you, Victor. Okay, episode 20. Episode 20. Hey, so, yeah. we made it. 2-0, yeah, I know, <laughs> doing big things. Um, so it's, I don't know how to say this exactly, but uh, I'm shutting down Kyoto Black. This is the first I'm hearing of this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you're shutting down Kyoto Black? Uh, I'm shutting down Kyoto Black for the rest of the year until springtime. <laughs> so Are we playing jokes right now? No, I'm serious. What? You're gonna yeah. make me cry. <laughs> yeah, so uh I'm just I'm 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 somewhat teasing you. Oh oh okay. So when I say I'm shutting down, what I mean is I'm closing my storefront. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm usually open three days a week. Okay. And now I will be open by appointment only because um I noticed that uh a lot fewer people are coming in now that the weather's kinda changed. And last year, I was thinking about closing seasonally. So this is something that is done in different industries all the time. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Like, so for example, you have an ice cream shop. Sure. They're usually closed during the winter. We're in our third summer, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I focus on cold brew. Yeah. And I had always kind of played with the idea of maybe closing seasonally. Okay. And just seeing how that treated me. Everything's still available online. Um, and also I can, uh, you know, have people come in by appointment if they really, really want to come in, I can have them come in and by appointment, but, um, I want to see what happens if I just kind of close seasonally, uh, get a little time back, honestly, like it'd be sure. nice to just, I know I'm only open three days a week, but it's also just me. So, um, you know, a bunch of things kind of came together and I just want to see how it plays this time. So, uh, this was my last weekend open and uh and no announcement though no announcement i'm gonna let everybody know i'm just uh, yeah. okay yeah i'm just doing it <laughs> i'm just doing it um yeah and i will be uh opening back up in the springtime okay for people because here's the thing even when i'm in season the amount of people walking in the door is very minute like yeah i don't rely on it it's i mean i know we're we do see a lot of like a moderate amount of foot traffic but like the demographic that are looking for or like that would off the street walk into a coffee shop mm -hmm. might not be there it's not yeah okay. i mean and these it's, are people running errands like not people trying to just yeah. stroll or people who just like want to grab a cup and they just grab a cup every week yeah so this will encourage a lot of people to go and subscribe online oh, okay and i was you know i still live in the neighborhood i'm yeah. still available so uh it's not like it's just completely ghost or whatever yeah but it, it won't be hard for you to come into the shop if someone wanted you to yeah so i've had over this weekend for example uh, i want to say six people come in in okay. total the weather's just changed so much. Yeah. And last year, especially during uh, December, January, February, hardly anybody. I, I had like whole weekends where not a soul came in and I didn't blame them because you had to put on all this stuff just to go out to come to a cafe that you can't even sit down at, you know. So I understand, yeah. you know, if I offered, you know, hot coffee or right, offered right. food, stuff like Make that, it, um, it would yeah. be a little different. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to put the full announcement out today. Wow. Uh, yeah. But. You know, today was the last day. Bittersweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll get your time, you know, fam time back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm saying, yo, Kyoto Black's doing better than ever. Oh, okay. Kyoto Black's going nowhere. Oh, okay, okay. It's strictly a time and a. I also want to retool some things. Yeah. Uh, and improve some things for next year. Right. So, right. and I like a little bit of time back since it's literally just me doing everything. No, I know, I know. You, yeah. you're, you are, um, one of the rare people that are try or are very intentional with their time. Mm -hmm. And so when you recognize that maybe yeah. time is getting away from you, yeah. um, this is your attempt to get it back. Yeah. And you know, I want to come back with some better systems because okay. I know like I'm doing so many things manually and so many things just kind of like I'm plugging holes in the ship while I'm sailing it and sure. you know, all that stuff. So I just want to kind of recollect and refocus. Yeah. And you know, the cafe or, you know, office hours type thing was never in the original business plan. It was something no, that just yeah. kind of emerged. And I love it, though. It's great. 
but it's also very, very seasonal. Okay. Um, once the temperature started to drop and the leaves started to fall, um, really very few people uh, even are interested in uh, having cold coffee, which is uh, mm. why today we're doing an episode talking about how Kyoto Black can be enjoyed hot as well. On the opposite, I'll, I'll have hot coffee in the summertime. Like Right. <laughs> well, they say that cools you off better. Does it? They say that because it makes you sweat. Oh. But I don't know if I want to necessarily sweat. <laughs> So, no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I've never done my own like kind of research on that, yeah. but a bunch of articles in the coffee world were kind of going around saying like, "Oh yeah, you know, if you uh, drink hot coffee during the summer, it actually cools you off better." I'm still drinking cold brew. Whatever fits your narrative, bro. Exactly, right? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> um, and I'm also in that camp of people who drink cold brew year round. Okay. You know, during the polar vortex time, I was drinking cold coffee. Um, but I know a lot of people like to switch over around this time. So I wanted to just reemphasize the fact that uh, Kyoto Black can be enjoyed hot. And we're just gonna- kinda, That's magical. Yeah, I know. It's, we're just gonna walk uh, through a couple different uh, versions of Kyoto Black and uh, kind of talk about how it tastes hot compared to how it tastes cold. And uh, you know what really prompted me to do this is I uh, told a customer um, what I just told you about me shutting down for a while and everything. And I told him he could you know, just order a pouch. And he's like, but that's gonna be so difficult to make. And then I was just like, I'm not getting my messaging out there right at all because like, he doesn't know that all you have to do is take the pouch out of the fridge and just pour it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's like, did you ask him right then and there? Like, what do you think you have to do? Yeah, yeah, I pouch? did. Oh, I was okay. like, yeah, walk me through. What do you think you have to do? Okay. And he's like, well, yeah, you know, you have to like take the coffee out and then you got to get your machine. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, so I just want to put this message out there. Like, you don't need any equipment no. to have Kyoto Black. Unless you want to have it hot, in which all you need now is just something to boil water. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So it's, it's easier than making eggs because you don't have to peel it, you know? That's how I say it, like, <laughs> boiling an egg's harder than making mm, Kittle Black. Mm -mm. Um, so, yeah, that got me thinking, like, let me put this out there because um, with the temperature change, I think people were like, oh, well, you know, Kittle Black's a cold brew. And it is, but that's not really... And this is from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. My intention was for it to be a complete coffee, hot, cold. Mm -hmm. It's just that with cold brew kind of taken off the way it has, it's like everyone's like switched on the, to cold sure. brew mentally. They might have forgotten about the they other forgot, component yeah. to it. Yeah. So um, today I do have a couple different uh, options for us to taste. Uh, the first one's going to be uh, the standard black label um, straight from the pouch. Um, I got a little bit of purple label here, just inside of a carafe. I, guys, I smell the berry in the room. And that's yeah. probably what it's coming from. And, or it might be coming from this, too. Oh, okay, okay. Which is I didn't a, know what this was, either. This is a very special coffee. So I got this from uh, my go-to for the limited edition coffees, which is uh, Black and White Coffee Roasters. Okay. And uh, they do really interesting preparations uh, on the uh, fermentation side of things. And, uh, you know, basically before the coffee even gets roasted. Mm. So this has two unique processes done to it. So it's a Costa Rican coffee that is anaerobically fermented. Mm. So basically the anaerobic fermentation is where you, uh, you know, you take the coffee, it's been, uh, the seeds have been removed from the fruit and now it's got this kind of sticky mm -hmm. uh, fruit slime on mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And you would normally take that into a tank with bacteria that are used to eat away at that slime and just clean off the coffee, right? Yeah. But you can also change that environment such that you favor a certain bacteria over others. Uh, and those will impart their own kind of flavors or their own sort of like textures uh, to the coffee. And in the anaerobic, typically what you end up getting is this much more like kind of uh, boozy or phenol-y kind of like, it's almost like a natural process, but not quite as uh, funky as a natural process, okay. um, but very explosive boozy notes from okay. that. Cool. So they did that and then they took it one step further. They, uh, <laughs> they actually coated before they, they did that process, they allowed that uh, coffee seed with the mucilage, you know, the sticky stuff still on it, they coated that in local cinnamon. Mm. So imagine these coffee, gr uh, coffee uh, seeds that are sitting in their own kind of fruit, and then they just take a bunch of local cinnamon powder wow. and coat it in that and let it dry out for six days. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And you get a really crazy cinnamon fruity note f from it. Um, I was... I was really curious to try it and see if it fit in and how it will work with the Kyoto style process. Um, I made some hot when I first got it and I didn't like it so much hot. So I was like, oh no, that I just like kind of sink a bunch of money into this and it didn't work. I brewed some Kyoto style and it tastes 
fantastic. Great. So yeah, um, I'm really happy to be able to show this off and to uh, kind of brainstorm and see where this could possibly fit in into the lineup very temporarily because it's a short release coffee. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah. So um, the first thing we're going to do is just take this pouch here and I'm going to show you how difficult or easy it is to uh, use Kittle Black. So all you have to do is uh, basically just remove this little plastic guy here. Mm -hmm. That comes off super easy. And then remove the foil. That's it. So now this is an open pouch. And the great thing about it too is uh, it lets the coffee out, but it doesn't allow any air in because this is all airtight. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a one way flow. Mm. So as you dispense this, the pouch just simply flattens out which keeps the coffee from going stale. Oh, That's, you know, okay, so okay. even when it's open, it's not really open and exposed to the air. That's a good thing to think about. Yeah. So I'm going to get some for you. No. Super easy to dispense. And uh, yeah, so let's just try this cold real okay. quick and then we'll be able to compare mm. it. Mm. <laughs> Wow, that's like liquid gold. Yeah, it's like very <laughs> nice focused chocolate. Yeah. It reminds me of the chocolate episode, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. how much acidity that chocolate had? Yeah, as it got cho cho chocolatier and chocolate. Yeah, yeah, as it became yeah. more pure chocolate, you actually pure got chocolate. that uh, acidity mm -hmm. come through. So, um, you know, people expect cold brew to not have acidity. If you do a Kyoto style, it still does. It's still like smooth, very smooth acidity, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, yeah, it's a chocolate acidity. Yeah. It's not like a lemon acidity or a grapefruit acidity. You know, our apple acidity. No, there's no tartness to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a much more luscious, um, milkier, uh, lactic kind of tasting acidity. Not too dry on the finish. Yep. Super smooth. Super stouty. Yeah. Yeah. Not too, not boozy though. Not boozy. Not yeah. boozy. It's like still very clean. Uh, the roast on it is uh, not overpowering. It's not like ashy or dry. No. Yeah. It's just... It's enough of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was this whole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? This is the gabagool right here. You know what I'm saying? This is <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think there was this whole idea that, oh, we need to push everything darker, stronger, harder, you know, and it's like, that's not making it better exactly. Okay. It's like balance. Yeah. Can you just simply make a coffee that tastes the way coffee smells? It's not easy. But when you hit it, it's worth it. Yeah. How, how many times, guys, like you smell it and you're like, oh, and then it like you taste it. It's like it's just a subtle version of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's most coffees smell better than they taste. You know, mm -hmm. when you go somewhere, you're like, oh, yeah, just smoke it. You taste it. It's like, eh, it's too heavy. It's too ashy. It's, you know, whatever. Everything on this had to be finely tuned from the uh, beans to the, the ratio that I brew with, the timing, everything. This is this is where it all started. Black label. This, wow. You know, so. Yeah, it, it's dialed in, guys. This is dialed in. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit of that for you, and we'll, uh, we'll go hot. You, you crushed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. I haven't eaten anything today, uh -oh. just coffee. This is more coffee. We'll see how I feel by the end yep. of this episode. So for the hot recipe, we basically just do um, one part coffee to two parts boiling water. And we got our water here. Cool. Nice and hot. Uh, I'm going to eyeball this. I mean, I do like to use a scale sometimes, but we're just going to eyeball it here. And uh, if you find that it's like too weak or too strong or whatever, um, you know, you can just tweak accordingly more water, more coffee. All right. So let's get in here and see if I uh, hit the ratio more or less. Is that a little cold? Cold? Yeah, like uh, temperature. Did I get you enough water to get it hot? It's warm. It's warm. You want a little more water? If it tastes watered down. Well, okay. it doesn't taste. You know, it doesn't taste like. Let me hit that a little bit more for you. Because if you hit the right temperature, it should. It should bring it out. It should bring it out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think I didn't add enough water the first time. So let's see. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah, exactly. What? Yeah. yeah, it tastes... Adding more hot water brings yeah. out the coffee-ness yeah. of it. Don't be afraid to hit it with I would. If you weren't here, I'm like, 
what the hell happened to this cold brew? It just, yeah, like, no. it's water now. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually got to be hot in order for you to taste it. S is that science? I'm sure that's science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, get in there. Get in ah. there. Yeah. It, it tastes stronger now that we added more water. Yeah, it does. Yeah. F different, though. Yeah. It's different mm. than the cold brew. Yeah, that's nice. It's really long. Giggity. Yeah, it's uh, hot coffee mm. doesn't bring out like all those subtle notes. It still tastes like coffee. It's yeah. enjoyable. It's very sweet. Uh, becomes more like milk chocolate, I find. Oh, okay. Like that sweetness is really tuned up. Okay. And it's not even like milky, milky chocolate. It's just like a little bit of like 55% mm -hmm. like milk chocolate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, not like overbearingly sweet yeah. milk chocolate. The sweetness is definitely tuned up on this compared to to the cold to the cold brew. Is it really? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I find at least. Okay. Because, just sit and just, how long do you taste sweetness on your tongue? I'm still tasting it now. Oh yeah, it doesn't disappear. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. It's like it's more amplified and just like longer lasting. Like I still taste the sweetness even right this second. Mm. Still going, still going just finally starting to fade a little bit okay i know what you mean super long yeah still there yep okay i see what you mean I, yeah. I, I when i when you initially said that i'm like it's not sweeter but like i guess it lasts longer it's it, it is to, to i me. mean yeah yeah i mean i would say it's sweeter because like even now i still can like taste it in my throat like it's just more persistent. That's what I, yeah, that's like duration. Yeah, it's a longer duration right, of right, flavor. Right, right. I can still taste it. Is that because it's like spread out amongst the water now? Like Yeah, I mean, it's the, the heat actually make, makes your tongue perceive sweetness more intensely. Oh. So that's like, if you ever notice um, when you drink something that's cold, like a slushy or something, a slushy is super sweet. Like it's so much sugar in it. Uh, but you can barely, like, it, it tastes like a regular soda to you. Okay. Because your tongue, in a way, is kind of being uh, paralyzed by the coldness. Okay. But if it were, all of a sudden, think about, like, your same slushy, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That melts. Mm -hmm. And then you're drinking it through a straw. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. It's syrupy. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. It's just That's warmer. a good analogy, yeah. Yeah. So w that, that's why that extra water, that warmth. The warmth. Brings it out. If you, if you are afraid to add too much water to it and you miss that actual spot, you'll be like, oh, this is just like lukewarm kind of weak coffee. Mm -hmm. But when you hit the spot and you add just a little bit more water so that it's hot, that's the key to make it hot. Learn something today, guys. Yeah. You'll <laughs> notice that the coffee has enough substance to stand up to it. Mm. It won't get over diluted. You'll make it stronger by making it weaker. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so funny how it's that so works wild. out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good to know. All right. So, I mean, um, has any of your have any of your clients like came back with you? Be like, hey, I don't know if I had enough water. It just doesn't taste right when I try try to make it hot. Um, generally, they just say like they like to tweak their recipe a little bit different from mine. Um, and some of them were like, for example, instead of adding just hot water to it, what they like to do is add hot water to it and then put that whole thing back on the heater just because they like that melt your face hot, which I'm not really big on. Yeah, I mean, my hot coffee is like ho definitely hotter than that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I said it what one eighty five. I said it to one eighty five. Okay. Yeah, it's I mean, not exactly two hundred, but I said it to one eighty five. Uh, that's your brewing temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's on the cool side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I mean, two hundred two to two hundred five is kind of the range yeah. that you would normally brew. I think I I, I was making tea and I never bumped it back up. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's a tea temp for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, that's also a good temp for not like getting too much bitterness out of the coffee as mm -hmm. well. So cool. It's it's not bad. I like it. Awesome. Um, do you want to finish out or do you want to dump it? You want to finish? finish it. Okay, cool. We're going to move over to purple now. A little bit here. So, yeah. So, uh, next coffee in the kind of flagship uh, lineup, uh, purple label. It's got very kind of citrusy melon notes. Um, yeah. This is personally between the two my favorite. Was this Kyoto, Kyoto style? This is still Kyoto. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is... Uh, I just did this instead of cracking out another pouch. Sure. Mm. Um, for many people, what's the favorite? 
Uh, so black is by far the most popular. Yeah. Um, it's also the one that is available in more kind of iterations, like on the site, you know, uh, there are more pouch varieties available just up front. Whereas purple was kind of the supplementary coffee that I added on there. And uh, I do have people who get like, I have customers who get six purples a month, you know, who mm -hmm. get more than one purple, you know. Um, but they usually reach out to me and say, hey, Justin, uh, can I bump up my purple? And I go, yeah, sure. And I just like customize, like do that, you know. Um, dealing with the multiple SKUs on the tech side of things, it's such a nightmare because, you know, when you first pick up your uh, subscription service through like, you know, Shopify or whatever, and you invest a lot into it, when you find all the kind of issues and bugs with it, um, or just things that are not as customizable as you'd like, you're kind of stuck with it once you reach a certain critical mass of customers. So you're just like, uh, so, you know, yeah. offering like multiple purples and multiple blacks, it became something that is uh, difficult to manage, which is actually one of the things that I want to do while I'm shutting this door down is to migrate um, cool. my store so cool, cool, cool. so that I can offer more kind of customized gotcha. online experience. So, cool. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, uh, you know, favoritism, uh, personally, I'm more of a purple label drinker. That's usually what I drink at home um, just because I like the kind of lighter flavors of things. Um, and people who are typically kind of like more into modern coffee like this, where it's like, uh, if you're getting this, at, like, for example, as a gift for someone who's a little bit older, chances are they're going to go for Black Label. They want a coffee that's yeah. like coffee. I thought, yeah, just going back to Ulu, when we were on the farm, they had some geishas growing. Uh, did you get to try any? No, no, no. I didn't try any coffee, actually, when I was on the farm. Oh. But they, they p pointed out some, like, trees. I'm like, geisha? Oh, I had that they're not like, too long ago. Stay away. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then geisha is one of those, like, upper, upper level. Okay. And um, one of the interesting things that I'm finding out about out about gesha is that it's really hard to over extract gesha like huh. you can brew it very intensely to just pull out more and more flavor and the dryness doesn't pop up as easy as it does in other coffees that's nice yeah i think it just has a lower you know um one of the things that coffee uses for uh its self-protection is the caffeine mm. and all the things that make it bitter mm -hmm. those are uh in insect uh, repellents mm -hmm. essentially um, and Gesha is a much more kind of delicate uh, plant. It's much more prone to getting attacked by bugs and different. Because it doesn't have as much caffeine? I think, yeah, I think it's just got a lower um, alkaloid profile than most coffees, which, you know, makes it taste great, but also yeah. makes it just much more easy and susceptible to different types of yeah. uh, attacks. And it's the cost. It's the call. Yeah, exactly. So you really have to, you know, manicure those and really watch out, like pretty much guard them mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you're not getting any sort of infestations or anything like that. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can't fight th that off as much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But they taste amazing. Yeah, they and did. Yeah. They better for the price. <laughs> so I'm getting a little melon off the nose and a little bit of tea, almost like a yeah, little bit of tea. black tea. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Mm. Tastes just like it smells. Yeah. Mm. Also, I get this uh, sort of like grape kind of purple drink type. That's very sweet, huh? Yeah, it's like not real grape, but like grape purple drink. Yeah, what's the one I, I get? I get the purple drink from like Maxwell's for Polishes. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait, they Every have. Time I they, go there, they have purple drink. They have purple drink. Is it just purple Kool Aid? No, it's like a soda. It's like it's like carbonated and everything. Is it just Fanta, or do they make it in house? Uh, it's, no, it's not, definitely not in house, but it's like an off brand. It's not Fanta. Okay, I might show though. I like. like it. Well, I should be like <laughs> so pull I'm, it off uh, like Scooby Doo. Uh, it's right. It's Jim's. So like right off the two ninety entrance. Okay. Uh, by, by on by Maxwell Street. I'm gonna shoot by investigating. Like, uh, is that just knee high? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. That's pretty nice. All right, let's heat that up. Okay. I'm gonna, oh, this one. I'm going to give you a little bit more just to have the right amount. All right. I'm going to go a little more aggressive with the water this time. There we go. Let's see how that goes. All right. Mm. 
I think probably went a little too aggressive. See, this is like the temp, or maybe mine's just like just under this when I make okay. my coffee. Let me give you just a touch more. See how that treats you. Mm. There's like a roastiness now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, in some ways when it's hot, uh, black is a little smoother. Mm. Like, cause this, it has like a herbal quality this that comes out. This tastes like, like coffee, coffee then. Like how yours is, your black label is chocolatey. Yeah. Yeah, it's so strange, isn't it? Yeah, how it flipped. Yeah, it flipped totally. Like this is just straight chocolate still. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it, you know, like. Yeah. This is actually kind of strong, like darker tasting, even though it's flat even out. It's light. It's flat out lighter. It's got way more uh, citrus notes, way more herbal notes. Like the roast, if you look at them side by side, it's way lighter. Yeah. But the heat just affects them differently. It's so interesting. And there's no way for me to predict it. It's just I have to brew it and just go for it. Well, I mean, based off this, could you predict? But is it also different, though? Like, if, what if you were to make the beans used for purple labels straight up with a pour over. Oh, oh, it comes out like way different. just different. Yeah. different. yeah. It's like super light, uh, you know, super modern and yeah. citrusy and you get lemon notes out of it and melon notes. Um, when you do Kyoto style with purple and then with, and the beans that I use for this are Apollo from counterculture. So those of you who know Apollo, uh, you know that, I mean, caramel is a big, part of it and the caramel really comes out much more when you kyoto style brew it um and when you heat it up that predominates still because right now this has a very caramel sweetness okay mm. and it's actually now that it's kind of settling in and temperature wise i'm liking it yeah i like it too i can say this much cold my preference is purple hot my preference is black right now how you feel about it? I, I feel the same way. Yeah. I would drink both hot, though, as well. Mm hmm But, yeah, I guess more black on, on the hot side. Yeah. It's interesting, going back to your, your friend that was like, oh, it's too much work to make yeah, it hot. I know. I mean, when you get used to the pouch lifestyle, I mean, yeah. it could be just it like, could be. It's like, like, oh, I, I, I guess I'll just drink water. cold brew today. Uh, <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> Spoiling them one drop at a time, you know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm just doing my part to turn everyone into the Jetsons, you know? It's just like, oh, I just push this button and then everything's done, you know? <laughs> Sounds like a vending machine. The vending machine lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if there's a way... Because, I mean, vending machine coffee is like, okay, but to turn uh -huh. it into like a boutique coffee... Yeah, you absolutely could. Um, I mean, there are so many things like when I go to Japan, for example, you know they have hot coffee and vending machines in Japan. I, I mean, I'm sure. I, I, I don't, I've never been. Yeah, like hot cans. Oh. Yeah. You get a hot can of coffee. Oh, wow. Yeah, you get the can. It's hot. It's actually a really enjoyable experience because, like, in the winter, it's like a nice hot can mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. just, like, not scalding but just hot enough. Mm -hmm. And they are replenishing those vending machines on a right. Like, their supply chain, mm -hmm. the way they have that whole uh, system worked out is the coffee is, like, always getting swapped out, like, on a, you know, every other day basis, every, you know, couple day basis. Um, and it's not going to knock your socks off in terms of like the quality of the coffee, but for everything, you know, for what it is, for what it is, it's like, if you want a hot cup of coffee, all you have to do is go put a buck into a machine mm. and you just get a hot cup of coffee and that's mm. it. Like for that, it's totally worth it. Some brands are better than others too. So do you think a Kyoto vending machine would, would thrive here? I think it could, yeah. And it's something that's been on my mind a lot, like uh, expanding into like canning and vending. Mm. You know, I could see doing personally branded uh, Kyoto Black vending machines. Wow. Um, and I could even see doing pouches and vending machines. Um, oh, wow. You know, if it, once I get enough kind of notoriety and recognition sure. and just have them be tied to locations where people who are likely to buy Kyoto Black in the first place would show up. Yeah. You know, yeah. treat it almost like it's Supreme or something where it's like people feel like the vending machine itself is a pop up. Yeah. You know. Interesting. Yeah. But it's there all the time. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see something like that. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the last one. Mm. Mm. 
Definitely don't want to get over caffeinated here. <laughs> All right, so this one is crazy. This is that uh, Costa Rican from uh, Black and White Coffee Roasters. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about making this a holiday uh, availability. Okay. Um, I have no idea how this is going to play with the water. Um, it looks a little bit lighter uh, just in color than the others. I don't know if that cinnamon processing does anything to the ability to extract from it. Um, but it's got an incredible nose, uh, very complex. Um, came out better cold than hot, which surprised me quite a bit. Uh, so I'm just curious to see. I have some ideas about what I want to do with this, but um, let's just go ahead and get in here. Oh, it smells great. Yeah, it smells incredible. This is, this is what, what I was smelling. In I think the that's room what you were before. smelling when you came. Yeah. What is that? That smells more like a grape to me than. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah, it has that, and I what think. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's got like this uh, uh, almost blackberry kind of thing going to me. Okay. Like what I get is a blackberry cr crumble pie. Okay, it's what it's my finger on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like pie ish. Yeah. 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 It's like if someone was making like, oh, I made a blackberry cinnamon crumble pie or a, a blackberry streusel. It reminds me of Chinese pork. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chashu, I actually. Chashu. chashu yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could actually chashu. see uh, you do a little bit. It's not like brining the chashu, but you do cook it in like a kind of broth. <laughs> Yo, this is one of the. And I could see. <laughs> Adding some of this to the chashu broth. That's wild. <laughs> For those of you who are probably uh, being perturbed by my pronunciation, the Japanese pronunciation is chashu. And I, yeah, yeah, char, char su. It's spelled char su, right? Yeah. And, but my m mom and always said it chashu. Chashu, okay. That's what they say in Japan. They say chashu. Yeah. So that's what I say. It's settled. Whatever. <laughs> Don't correct me, bro. Would you say it's lighter than your purple? Uh, yeah, it's got right. more acidity. Yeah, it's higher acidity. Yeah, it's got this weird earthiness. Higher acidity though, like, like too much, like like slightly off-putting, or I don't know. I feel like this one probably is not necessarily a straight-up coffee. This is a coffee that kind of gets uh, added to something, or it's like a a a, a pairing coffee, like a cocktail, or like a cocktail. So here's my thought. I was thinking to make like a warm spike cider mm. with this. Please do. Yeah, I think that would be really. Last fall you made like a you made a hot drink here. Yeah, yeah, it was the, the cherry one. the cherry one. Yeah. And I keep I've mentioned this in a few episodes, but the the banana creme. Oh yeah 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 one. yeah yeah the uh, that one's a cold one, but I'm sure no, it could be cold. yeah oh. I'm sure it could be served hot. I mean it's oh, okay okay yeah it's bananas foster. Latte, oh, yeah, so I'm far. Not even a banana person. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> I love bananas. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, bring yeah. that. <laughs> I think that would be solid. Bring I like a like three solid or three or four solid drinks. Yeah. You feel like you want to open the shop back up. Yo, I feel like this actually would be a good time to experiment, or a really good time to experiment. Maybe, but maybe make an episode. Yes, I think. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm getting this kind of brainstorm the thing. Gears going. are turning. They're turning. I just, it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> a little dust falls off <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah right Oof. but um <laughs> the banana sponsor latte i think would be absolute fire with this Ooh, absolute yeah. fire yeah mm. all right yeah i think we got something for episode 21 we'll see like i think i might crank out some holiday recipes or something like that. I don't usually like to uh, season and be like, oh yeah, the next episode is going to be on this. But I think for this, while it's available, because it's a limited uh, availability, mm. and I want to make it for the holidays, for Thanksgiving. So mm. I think that'll, that timing will work out perfectly. Yeah, could we, is this, when, and if you, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot now, but like if you were to sell this, is this, is this going to be in pouch form? Is this going to be- It's going to be a pouch, yeah. Pouch and that's form. the thing, you know, with this coffee, um, is this really a purple label coffee? Because generally my limiteds are purples. Ooh, make a whole nother category. Yeah, mm. gold label. I don't know. Ooh, <laughs> mm. you know, it made me think of last. So last Thanksgiving, I was fortunate enough to try the Alinea take home Thanksgiving yeah. thing, and it was so well done, well mm -hmm. packaged. Every ingredient was probably sourced yeah. to the yeah, highest. Yeah, we ate potential. more Alinea last year than any other. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I'm sure it made every. It made it very affordable. Yeah. Um, 
But what if you like curated a similar experience via coffee mm. where like you created a nice placard with mm -hmm. with instructions to make these drinks at yeah. home during the holidays when they had people and then imagine mm -hmm. they have they have family and friends over for yeah. dinner and then they get to share this drink experience with their family and friends. I, I could see doing something like that for local pickup, especially. Yeah, if you packaged enough of like whatever ingredients they mm -hmm. needed, so right. they don't have to go out and source their own things. Yeah, all done by you. Yeah, I actually did something like that before. Did you? Okay. Yeah, um, I did it for a uh, Zoom okay. uh, instructional. Nice, nice. Yeah, and that was pretty awesome. During like, pandemic. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, pre-portioned out a bunch of stuff and then did a Zoom sure. with a bunch of people, and it was sure, pretty sure. awesome. So yeah, that, that sounds fun. That sounds dope. Yeah, definitely getting the gears turning. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, let's have this hot. Okay. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, so. <laughs> that cha shoe taste is just lingering in my yeah. mouth now. <laughs> wow, it's still very light. Yep. We'll see how this, if this was a good amount of water to add. Mm. Mm. Too much water? That's, I like it. I actually like that temperature. I'm going to... Hmm. <laughs> Tastes similar. Yeah. To me. Uh, cold and hot. Let me see. <laughs> nice sweetness. I feel like it kind of loses a little bit of character high though. It's like, it's right on par with cold, but if not a, a slightly subtler version. Yeah. Yeah. And it's missing that, uh, that blackberry kind of like, you know, fruity explosiveness that it had. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Like the uh, one thing, another thing I learned it's more aptly during now. this is like, I would have never expected the profiles to change hot mm -hmm. and cold. So, you know, if I were to buy this and try it both hot and cold, my expectation is to for it to taste the same. Yeah. And this would have met that for me. Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. But now going into it, my expectations have changed and, you know, knowing that hot temperatures can bring certain things out mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and it's really on a coffee-by-coffee coffee basis. Like, every coffee kind of performs differently. So the only way to know at the end of the day is to actually try it. Um, it's the key to life, right? Yeah, guys? right. <laughs> You'd have never thought that the black and purple would taste the way they did yeah. compared to each other, hot and cold. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, this was really the core product. Like, I didn't have when I first started Kittle Black. I just had this coffee in mind, mm. and it was I just wanted to make coffee that tasted the way coffee smelled, and that was as simple as that. That was the seed gotcha. of everything. And then from there, I just kind of start putting more ideas on top of it. But you know. In the genesis of it, it was literally like I didn't think I would have any other products than this. So, and now, you know, we're kind of expanding. So, yeah, that's fun, man. Yeah, I think this is going to be a uh, a coffee that is a complement or a you know supplement to a cocktail or to some kind of preparation, or it needs some sort of like recipe list around it. Like, I think it could perform really well as a latte with the right kind of other ingredients at it, the other elements, like, like you're saying, the bananas foster. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty crazy. Also, too, um, occasionally I make, like, tiramisu using oh. the coffee. Oh. Yeah. In the tiramisu. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you know how when you dip the ladyfingers in espresso? Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, you just dip it in a you know what? I concentrate. Didn't, I didn't actually do that when I made tiramisu. How'd you... I didn't dip it. They, how'd just, you add coffee flavor? Um, I don't know, actually. It's did you add coffee I flavor? I don't know if we did. It oh. was in Italy, too. I don't know. Yeah, no. Typically, what you do is you get, like, a gang of espresso, and you take your ladyfingers, and you dip them in really quickly yeah. into the... Uh, I don't remember doing that. We yeah. just put it right in the... We just sat it in there. We didn't really... Mm. And then they just became soft. I thought... I was like, how does this... How do cookies become soft? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe you I missed... make legitimate <laughs> tiramisu, then. Yeah, you got to dip Damn it in it coffee. Damn it, Italy! You got to dip it in coffee. You got to go back now. Yeah, right? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, take this home with you. What? Yes. Uh, oh, and uh, if you feel like making some tiramisu, make some tiramisu. I, I, Justine's on a baking kick, so we, I think we will. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would advise her to just buy ladyfingers. They're really difficult to make. 
<laughs> they're so difficult no, to make. No, yeah, it was like packaged cookies. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Making your own ladyfinger socks. So it's like I didn't so. Know you, it, that, that's a thing to make your own. It's so tough. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Absolutely, man. Um, and let me know how it goes. Um, just dip them in very, very quickly. Like, okay. You know, very quickly. Um, yeah, I can see using this also to make tiramisu and just to give it a little razzle dazzle. Sure. And uh, I could actually, this is something that I've been kind of mulling in my head because I love bananas. Um, I was like, is there a way to like, have you ever had the, uh, like the banana cream Nilla wafer? No. Uh, I know dessert? What, I know what, no. It's super, super good. Okay. Yeah, it's literally just. Is this something you buy or something someone you has just, to make? You just, make it. You make it? It's just literally like layered sliced bananas with Nilla wafers and whipped cream just alternated. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And then the Nilla wafers kind of absorb that extra, you know. Uh, moisture and then it just becomes like this really nice thing. And that's what we did with the tiramisu. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> clear, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, and I just want to make something like that where it's like a melding of that dessert and tiramisu. Mm. Like a banana tiramisu. Okay. And I think that this would be like the perfect coffee for that. So I think that's what I'm going to be working on. Cool. Uh, I'm excited. We're excited yeah. for you. So, um, I realized too also uh, we did not do a question of the day last time. We we, oh, we skipped that. So um, question of the day. Uh, what kind of coffee do you normally drink during the holidays? I know people, they like to kind of show off because uh, I know the holidays are coming up, mm -hmm. but this mm -hmm. episode is going to be uh, debuting two weeks out from now. So it'll be much, much closer to the holidays. Oh. Yeah. Like what? Or let me actually explain it a little bit. What are you planning to do for drinks for the holiday? Let's not even make it coffee. Like, what do you plan on doing for drinks? Because um, everybody drinks a little something different. I know uh, some people like to focus on wine, cocktails, mm. uh, coffee, non-alcoholics. I don't know. I mean, for to be honest, like, uh, I, I wasn't. I don't know. I didn't really do much. You, okay. Are you um, hosting this year or anything? We or? not necessarily hosting, but you know, your I think from last year your cherry liqueur coffee mm -hmm. drink. Um, and you're like, this would be a great thing to bring to parties. Mm -hmm. So even if we're not hosting, I think we'd like to try something like yeah. that and bring something over if we were to go somewhere. Um, but typically, like, the one thing that comes to mind is going to Chris Kindle and, like, just getting... Gotcha, mold you know, wine. Mold wine, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think we'll be a little more experimental this mm -hmm. year. We'll try something different. Yeah. I've been on a real tear with Vesper Martinis. Explain. So a Vesper Martini is basically... Uh, a version of the martini from Casino Royale. Okay. And uh, oh, it. Off the character. Yeah, Vesper. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Vesper, okay, yeah. Okay. And uh, it is basically um, part vodka, part gin, and part Mo Coke Americano. Okay. Uh, li what, Lillet, what, Lillet that? Blanc. Okay, so it's basically a, uh, a liqueur. It's like a, uh, like a sweet fortified wine. Okay. Um, and it has like a little bit of like citrusy kind of notes like lemony notes sure. and you can even get like this little bit of kind of almost like cocoa because if you've ever had cacao juice cacao juice tastes like chocolate and lemon oh yeah so wild. like the cacao nib there's a juice that comes from that and it tastes like chocolate and lemons Cool. And Koki Americano kind of tastes like that, too. So when you crack open, like, cocoa, can, can you, like... You can squeeze it and, like... Squeeze it. Oh, I mean, okay, okay. you should ferment it, though, because oh. it needs to kind of, like, let itself out a little bit. Sure. It's kind of hard, but when you ferment it, it kind of Soft. gets softens, mm -hmm. and um, there's this whole process for that, and people put them inside of these coolers, almost like an igloo, uh, and then you just kind of tap it and just hit it, and there's, like, this yellowish kind of juice that comes out of it, and it's, mm. like, it tastes like lemons and chocolate. Mm. You know, it's really, really good stuff. Um, but that's kind of what Coke Americano tastes like. That okay. with like a little bit of wine flavor, like a white wine flavor. Okay. Um, typically, it, or traditionally, it was made with Lillet Blanc. But the new Lillet recipe uh, doesn't taste like the original recipe that was used to craft the drink. But Coke Americano actually tastes more like the old Lillet. Sure. So people just use Coke now. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, I, we're flying out um, to D.C. Oh. for the holidays for Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And I, what I'm likely to do is just batch out. Uh, Vespers and just take that on the uh, plane with me along with some coffee just because everyone always expects coffee when I show up and then uh, you know just kind of have Vespers just for everybody wow. on top of everything else because that's fancy yeah I love Vespers so. it sounds simple but it sounds fancy too it's simple but it's it's very delicious and just like a great you know you garnish it with the little women uh, lemon rind and oh, you know okay. it's cool 
It's a very nice cocktail, so that's that's yeah. what I'm gonna be doing. What do you are, do? You guys like drink anything cool like during the holiday? Like another thing like that, Justine just seems like an old fashioned. Person, oh yeah, so my like, wife is too. That seems very like holiday ish too. It is, yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we've been playing with like doing coffee rinses with the drink too, where you take a, just a little bit of coffee and rinse the glass with it. Oh. It actually is really nice with the Vesper if you do purple label. Hmm. It just adds to that little bit of citrusy huh. character and just kind of brings a little bit of focus to the drink. Um, it's a great eat with or without, honestly, though. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Cool. Um, I keep forgetting, but like I from Hawaii, we brought uh, mushroom coffee back <laughs> or like like functional. Like we, a few episodes ago, we did functional coffee or we asked about functional coffee. And uh, uh, yeah. And the, the uh, sad thing is like it was already it's already ground. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's sitting on my <laughs> on my table like table. And I'm like, I keep wait. So it. it's this is coffee with mushrooms and not mushroom as a coffee substitute. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We can bring it on it, you know. When, uh, we're not doing it on the show. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, like, you doing show? like, I thought of you. I bought it. I brought it back. And uh, I still haven't had it. So, it Well, just... yo, bring it on. Um, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll just try it on an episode. Just let me know, and we'll, uh, we'll plug it in there uh, for, for uh, the end of the episode. I, th- I think, and it was just sitting at Mountain Thunder. Um, okay. It's not their coffee, though. It's gotcha. Just coffee. Well, I won't throw any shade at it until I actually try it. <laughs> but then I'm like, eh. Yeah, we'll see. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning into this episode, and we will catch you uh, the week after next. Peace.